Now we're going to look at how to create invoices. So we've done the work or we've sold the item and now we need to invoice the client to get paid. Uh, this is the create inv uh, invoices window or at least the screenshot. And so when we're creating an invoice, we're creating that for somebody to then pay us at a later point. We're generally not uh, going to create an invoice that results in a contemporaneous payment. That will be different. The invoice will go into our accounts receivable as opposed to a cash sale. And so our debit credit entries that are being made behind the scenes will be a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to revenue sales or you know whatever we want to refer to our revenue account as. And um, I, I tend to also break my revenue accounts down by source just so I can have a better track of where my money is coming from. So in the Create Invoices window, we've got four tabs. We've got the main tab, the formatting tab, the send shift, and the reports. And so we'll go through those in a minute. Now, as I alluded to here um, in the way that I break things down in terms of my, my revenue, so does Kristen Reyna Interior Designs. And Kristen Reyna has two revenue um, uh, pools. Uh, decorating and design services and you know, for me I break them down not only by practice area criminal versus bankruptcy which allows me to see trends if all I've got is money coming in and I don't pay attention to where it's coming from I don't always know gee should I beef up my advertising in one area or another and so by tracking those sources and the revenue that's coming in that gives me a pretty good idea of where I need to focus any marketing efforts. Uh, additionally, I break mine down by Vermont and New Hampshire. So I want to know, gee, all of a sudden, you know, I could be busy, but if I've missed advertising opportunities in one state or the other, that may become apparent when I look at my income streams. And so you can create an invoice and from a template. So there will be a default template there. There are a number of different templates you can use. And I will, and I, I should also say, not only can you print and mail them out traditionally, but you can email them. Um, I hate invoices by email. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I get so much clutter in my email that the odds that I might miss an invoice it gets emailed to me are pretty high. I would rather actually go to the post office and open my PO box and take it out that way. And so I'm going to stop here and go over to the live version. So we're back here at our customer center and we can access the create inventories window in two places. We can either go to our new transactions and it's got invoices here or we can just go straight to the customer, create invoices. I tend to I operate for the most part from this main toolbar, unless I've got one of these centers open already. You'll see that the customer that I had already highlighted automatically shows up here. I can use this drop down to select a different uh, client. If I had gone straight from the customer window, then it wouldn't have selected one for me and I would need to do that. Here's where also I can discover, oh gee, I never set up a customer for this. So now I get to go do it. And in, so now you've got to stop your invoicing process, go through and do that. So while there is a way, that's not necessarily the best way. The best thing is to just have everybody in there from the beginning and then uh, you don't have to worry about it when you're now doing your invoices. This is the standard invoice template. There is also, you'll see, an attorney's invoice template. And so that's an NDPO number, what you're 
Your payment terms will automatically populate in here from that customer screen. But if this happens to be a unique transaction that results in different payment terms, you have the opportunity to select that when the due date is, and it will automatically assign your invoice number. If for some reason you want these invoices to be dated later, you can, if you're just going to do all the entry, but you're not going to send these out till Tuesday, then you might want to go back and put Tuesday's date in there. Uh, we'll go back to the QuickBooks service invoice, which I believe is what was in there to begin with. And so then we've got items, we've got guitar, in this case, we have guitar and piano lessons. So this is our opportunity to segregate that income so that we know whether most of our monies, maybe it turns out piano lessons is not lucrative and we shouldn't be marketing to that, or maybe we're, we should be marketing more, who knows? And how many description rate and the amount. And then should also point out if we had recent transactions, those would pop up here. And again, those are nice. I just like to look over and see those from time to time credit limit, our delivery method, and any notes show up here. We want to, um, I guess, a greater view of transactions. We can just click over here and we can go back and see transactions here if we have some. So now we're going to look at receiving payments. And this is the point, I guess, where I will digress and talk about the difference between receiving payments and the sales receipts window. In both instances, money is coming into you. The real question is, which one of those do you use when money is coming in? The receive payments window is what you want to use when you have invoiced that client. So we're not talking about a cash sale for the received payments. We're talking about a payment on, toward the accounts receivable. And so you can get to that just like the invoices we looked at, either through the customer center and the new transactions window, or from the toolbar at the top, there, the drop down from the customer will get you to this, this place also. You can indicate sources of payment here, and it will show you automatically four, but you can click down here and have more of them here. And so what it will do here is it will show you all the open invoices that you have for this client. And then it will ask you, which one of these invoices do you want to apply this payment to? And as you check off invoices, if you have multiple ones, then it will um, show those invoices as being paid. And you can also partially pay an invoice this way. Uh, if there is, if there are not enough invoices and there's more money than uh, on the payment, it will ask you if you want to generate a credit for that customer. And again, that's the main screen reports payments. Uh, for our debits and credits, we're going to be because now we're receiving payments. Payments are cash, and it will go to, and it says here, undeposited funds. And when we get into banking, you'll see why it says undeposited funds. But it's going to be debit our cash or our undeposited funds. And then in our credit will be to accounts receivable. And hide things here. Kind of here. And so, in terms of receiving the payments, and, and now it's showing you here how, that this one only had one invoice that was outstanding when this payment came in. And for Beverly Jones, $600, and it's by check. And I always like to note the customer's check number because it, it just makes it a lot easier if you've got to go back and trace stuff later. It also will show up on the customer's bill as Hey, check number, whatever. And I, I always like my clients to know that I'm keeping really close tabs on my accounting so that they don't 
they, they know that there's a level of diligence that will cause them not to think that I won't notice if they don't pay me. So by noting the check number, I think it just shows an additional attention to detail on next month's bill that gives them confidence that I am diligently tracking their payments. And so, as I said, uh, when we were over in the live version, if the invoice, if the money that you've received is less than the invoice amount, you can show it basically an underpayment, a partial payment. So in this case, we have $500 going toward our $1,440 bill. But the, in, the flip side of that is also true. If the customer had mailed us $1,600, it would ask us if we wanted to leave that as an overpayment. And so you'll see this little pop-up box here, and you'll see a, a comparable one when we get to the overpayment screen. And as I had described too, we can apply payments to multiple invoices. So all your outstanding invoices are going to show up here and you will check the boxes on the payments that you, and you might say, well, why wouldn't I just go to the oldest one first? Maybe there's a dispute about an invoice. Maybe the customer says, well, I'll pay you for the other ones, but but we need to, I'm not happy with the delivery on this and I'm not so sure I want to pay you until we can get this resolved. So you don't want to apply a payment to that. And instead, you'll want to make sure that you select the correct invoices so that all that's left unpaid is whatever you intentionally chose to have left outstanding. And so I'm going to Stop here, we'll go over to the live version. I will end this video and then we'll talk about sales receipts. So we're in the live version. Again, we can approach this from either the receive payments window here on new transactions. And because money may come in and I'm doing 12 other things, I'm probably not going to have the customer center open and that's quite likely where I'm going to do that and make sure my payment gets recorded. So we've got our amount. This is just the raw data file for this chapter, so I don't happen to have any information in here to apply payments to, but, to, but you will certainly. We can also make reports from here. And if we want to see other payments. This is also where you can do credit card processing as well if your company chooses to do that. And so I'm going to end this video here and pick up with sales receipts.